Rohit, R-O-H-I-T, in San Diego writes to me a very short note. He said, what is direct digital amplification? How is it different than traditional class D? Well, I think that is a great question and I'm going to try and explain it to you as simply as I can because it can be a technically challenging subject to try and understand for people who are not engineering folks. And let me see if I can shed some light on it. Okay, so let's talk about a Class D amplifier. Class D amplifiers run on what's called PWM, pulse width modulation. Sounds fancy. It's not that difficult. So like a digital signal, which we know is a one goes high or a zero goes low, the same is true for a pulse width amplifier. The difference is in a digital word or a digital signal, something that a DAC would use, all the on and off bits are basically the same length, okay? So they come on once every 44,000 times of a second and the combination of when you look at them as a group of 16, let's say, as a CD, you have a group of 16 of these on and off things. They're all the same length and all we're really doing is counting one, nothing, 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 two, nothing, 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 nothing. That makes a number and that's a word, okay? Or this one's all on or this one, you know, whatever the combination is. In a pulse width modulated amplifier, each of these on signals or the off signals vary in width. So the maximum width is here and the minimum width is here. And they run at about 100,000 times a second. So every second, a pulse comes out or doesn't. Could be zero too, right? But let's just focus on the ones, hmm. let's just focus on the ones that do come out and go from zero to a fairly high number. It, 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 normally you're, you're looking at two or three volts for a digital signal. Now we're looking at 50 volts or 40 volts, whatever size amplifier that we have, right? So this is a big jump from zero up and it stays on for a, a whole bunch of time. And if the signal is really loud, it stays on for a long time, then turns off and the next one comes on and turns on. And by this combination of varying width of these pulses, we wind up getting a signal. And the longer the pulse and the more of them, the higher the signal and the opposite is true. So if we have our traditional sine wave, here's zero, then that pulse width amplifier is making noth uh, nothing, 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 nothing. As we start rising up on the sine, we're gonna go like this in our sine wave, right? So as we start going up, the pulses here, which are always coming out, one every 100,000 times a second, they start growing in size. And when we get up to the very top of this sine wave, like that, all these pulses are as big as they can get, deep, 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 big pulses. And then as it goes down, the pulses get smaller, 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 down to zero. And then bigger, 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 bigger is it. Okay, does that make sense? That's how a pulse width amplifier works. Now, here's where I directly answer this poor fellow's question, because it's probably more than you wanted to know. How do we determine from this sine wave how big to make these pulses? Well, we use a modulator, which is an analog device. And I'm not going to get into the, there's triangle waves, and there's all kinds of stuff, right? But we use an analog means, which is kind of goofy, but that's what we do. We take this signal in and we come up with this analog modulator that tells these pulses how wide to get, all right? A direct digital does that modulator, that input modulator, 
digitally, which is a much smarter way of doing it. The output stage, the pulse width modulated output stage, is the same, no difference. The modulator, the one that converts this sine wave into these telling instructions for the output stage to make these varying pulse widths, that's what's different. And that is where the digital, uh, it, 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 it's so much easier to tell, like using uh, a digital means to precisely get those widths right, as opposed to this kind of hokey triangle wave that goes up and down and we compare it and it, it goes you know, wider. Anyway, I'm not going to get into that. So it's a much better way of doing class D. And one of these days, we will probably eventually switch all of our class D products over to this direct digital method because it's a lot better. I hope that someone out there understood what I'm talking about because a lot of people don't. <laughs> Thanks. Take it easy. Thank you.